hitting our run cost by about 10 to 15 percent. And at first, it was simply that. We had a big bucket of things that we called maintenance and overhead. More recently, we've gotten a lot more nuanced. In the past few quarters, we've started to categorize our run work more precisely. And we've used that to be able to find areas where we want to invest to reduce tech debt and improve developer productivity. Jesse, my boss, shared this quote. And anecdotally, each year we've had fewer reprioritization fire drills. You know, the kind where like everyone has to get in a room and like lay out on paper all of the different things that they're doing and try to figure out what you can cut. This year, we were even able to accommodate new priorities mid-year. Of course, we still needed to move some resources around and make trade-offs, but we avoided the thrash that we had had in prior cycles where it felt like it was this big, gnarly effort. Okay, so what's next? You've heard a lot about where Product Ops started, some of our successes, but every presentation is supposed to have a section on the challenges that lay ahead. My internal comms team didn't want challenges that lay ahead on a slide. So I have four things that are top of mind for me as I continue to build on these successes and level up my team. First, it's been a year, but I'm still adapting to the expanded tech ops remit. Going back to the Tuckman model, when taking on the expanded scope last summer, I had to restart at forming and storming. My initial focus was simply to get the team to feel cohesive, which took about six months. Now the team has come together, but I'm still working to hone the specific value proposition of all of those different sub-functions and socialize them with our partners. We're getting there, but I'd still put us in the norming phase. Second, I want to get better at measuring impact. A product ops colleague at another company joked recently that the best way to measure success of product operations is vibes. <laughs> and let me tell you, we have great vibes at Oscar. You've seen throughout the presentation, our reputation is stellar, both with product and engineering. So to keep bragging, here are a few more quotes of how all the people find our work really, really impactful. But as great as these are, I still want to establish clear outcomes and metrics that are driven by product operations to more clearly articulate our value to the organization. Third, we need to find more room for process improvement. Or as Eric Reed would say, we need to improve daily work because improving daily work is even more important than doing daily work. Eric is right, but boy, is it hard. By design, our product ops roles are run work heavy and staffed by relatively junior people. It's a constant struggle to find enough space to implement process improvements versus just keeping the lights on. In a recent time survey that we did, we found that approximately 75% of the team's time is spent on run work. We've set an aspirational target to bring that to 60% so that we can spend 40% of our time on process improvement. One lever we're experimenting with is Gen AI. We've had a few early successes, but we need to figure out the best way to scale that across other pods. And finally, I'm looking to streamline our quarterly roadmap process. Yes, it was a process that I used as a case study, and I do believe that it's had a positive impact on the team but I would be the first to admit it has more overhead than I would like. We're actively reviewing the process and I'm hopefully we can get improvements to the team soon. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about my experience establishing a DevOps inspired product operations and now tech operations team at Oscar Health. I hope it also inspires you to think about your own ecosystem. Maybe you have systems thinkers that also wanna drive company outcomes. Find them and use them as your own unexpected DevOps champions. But before I close, since I've got the stage for a little bit longer, I also want to make a pitch to all of you. I want to challenge the prevailing wisdom that DevOps are engineers who manage cloud infrastructure and SRE. Gene mentioned this in his opening remarks this morning. And I know I'm preaching to the choir. Everyone here knows that DevOps is more than that. But look at a recent search I did for DevOps jobs. Might not be able to see, so Google's on the left and LinkedIn's on the right. All of them, engineering roles focus on AWS, cloud, and SRE. So then I went to everyone's favorite Atlassian. Page starts out great. To quote, DevOps is more than just a development and operations team working together. 
is more than tools and practices. DevOps is a mindset, a cultural shift where teams adopt new ways of working. I love this. It's inclusive and, and emphasizes the holistic need to work together. Scroll further, you see DevOps culture. Very inclusive. But right after that, womp womp. A DevOps engineer is an IT generalist with a uh, knowledge of software development, infrastructure management, and systems administration. I felt like I wasn't allowed in the club. So coming to this conference and being with all of you, it feels like I've made it to the cool kids table. Like, I'm not going to lie. I've been, I've been so excited for this. So as tech leaders, I want 